If the Jets don't make the playoffs this year, Aaron Rodgers is going to wish he ran for vice president. Grassy Posse Packer Nation. Welcome to episode of Packers, the podcast where you don't. I do Packers fan, but it sure does help. I'm your host, Tom. This is the second year in a row that I've worn a Packers shirt for these predictions. Grassy. And today we are going to be predicting our second AFC division, this time being the AFC East, which is intriguing to say the least. Last year, my predictions didn't really pan out very well. I had the Jets finishing in first place with a ceiling of 12 and 5 and a floor of 9 and 8. They finished with a record of 7 and 10 and in third place, but I didn't know he was only going to last for four snaps. Then in second place we had the Bills. I had a ceiling of 11 and 6 and a floor of 8 and 9. They finished with an 11 and 6 record. I had the Dolphins finishing third with an 11 and 6 ceiling and an 8 and 9 floor. They finished with an 11 and 6 record. And I had the Patriots finishing in fourth place with a ceiling of 9 and 8 and a floor of 6 and 11. They finished with a 4 and 13 record. So they were worse than I could have possibly imagined. So, this year expectations are pretty high for the Jets. The Dolphins are another team that it's kind of now or never for the team that they've assembled. And the Patriots, yeah, they're probably going to finish in last place. So, yeah, we got a lot going on here. The Bills, are they in this weird kind of rebuild? What's going on? Are they still going to be able to win a bunch of games? It's going to be a wild time. So, let's get to it. Starting off with the Buffalo Bills. The Bills, things were not looking good last year for the Bills. It was a rough start. They lost to the Jets in overtime after they lost Aaron Rodgers. However, Josh Allen and the Bills, they turned that season around after a 6-6 six and six start. It's approximately 3,720 to 1. Never tell me the odds. They not only made the playoffs, but they won their division, a division the Dolphins should have won, but <laughs> they dropped the ball, and also December football is not their friend. And the Bills had a top 10 offense last year. They were 6th in points per game scored, they were the 7th best rushing offense, and the 8th best passing offense. Over on the defensive side, they were 4th in points allowed, they were 15th in rushing defense, and 7th in passing defense. So, all around, the Bills are a very solid football team. They did lose a lot of guys in free agency this year. However, I'm not overly concerned. Stephon Diggs being the biggest name there, but they also lost guys like Mitch Morse. They lost a bunch of guys on defense as well, like Poyer and Trey White. But for a lot of those veterans that they released, they either haven't been healthy or they haven't been really productive. Stephon Diggs, for example, disappeared in the second half of the season last year. Now they still need receivers, which is why they brought in Curtis Samuel, which is a move that I love. Keon Coleman they drafted, who is already a fan favorite in Buffalo. And the Bills, again, they're just in this weird spot. They're similar to the Bengals in which if they have Josh Allen behind center, like the Bengals have Joe Burrow, they're going to be competitive. I'm curious to see what their run game is going to look like. Von Miller coming back for another season at a heavy discount. And it just seems like they are rebuilding, but again, they have enough tools. And if that team is able to gel together, they're going to string together some wins. Taking a look at their schedule, I think that they're going to have some problems within this division. I think the Dolphins and the Jets are going to play them pretty tough, but they also have to play against the Ravens, the Texans. They got to go be away in Seattle. They got to play the Rams, the Lions, and these are just their away games. They're going to be playing against the Jaguars, the Chiefs, the 49ers. So, Right off the bat, the AFC East does not have a fun schedule this year, and the Bills, they're going to have to be on their A game if they're going to want to win it again. So considering their schedule and their current state, I have their floor pretty low right this second at a 7-10 and 10 record. Again, a floor is if everything goes wrong, and I'm just looking at these teams, and there are a lot of good teams that they have to play. However, I have their ceiling up at 10-7 and 7 for all the reasons I just stated before. They were running the ball effectively last year, especially with James Cook, which I like because they really needed to run the football. Josh Allen, while he can be maddening it sometimes, is one of the best QBs in the NFL. And their defense, while they did lose a lot of pieces, like I said, a lot of them were aging veterans, and so I'm not too concerned about that. However, my big concern is that Matt Milano is injured and is out until at least December. So that definitely is a huge hit for that defense. It's a huge blow to Matt Milano, who's a fantastic player. And so I wouldn't be surprised if they wind up finishing in the middle here, maybe around eight or nine wins. And I don't know if that's going to be enough to win the division. But yeah, the Bills, I have them as a very competitive football team this year. How competitive? We'll see. Then you got the Miami Dolphins. The Dolphins, who almost won their division for the first time since 2008. I think you had it for a moment, and then you lost it. <laughs> oh, well. 
It was nice while it lasted, right? Again, December football, not their friend. And for the Dolphins, of course, their offense is absolutely incredible. It's top 10 in every category. They were the second best in points per game. A lot of it just coming from that 70-point game. They were sixth in rushing offense and first in passing offense. You look at guys like Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell, yeah, it's going to be pretty good. Then looking at the defensive side of the ball, they were 22nd in points allowed per game. They were 7th in rushing defense and 15th in passing defense. They did lose some guys in the offseason, for example, like Hunt on that O-line, Wilkins on the other side, which is a big loss, but it's just going to be a matter of can they replace him. They got Poyer, they got Fuller, Ramsey should be good to go, and so there's things to be excited about. They gave a massive extension to Tua in the offseason, and Looking at this team, you have all the pieces there. The offense is potent. They're so good. But when it comes down to crunch time, they're unable to get it done. They went to Kansas City last year in a freezing cold game. They lost to the Chiefs in an ugly game. But it seems like that's how the Dolphins have been eliminated when they go on these runs, is that they're ugly games or they have catastrophic injuries that just derail their season. And here... I don't know if the Dolphins have done enough or made enough changes to get them over the hump, but maybe just a shift in schedule and just playing different teams is going to allow them to be successful because I imagine that offense is going to be pretty damn good still. Taking a look at their schedule, besides the division, they do have some tough games like against the Rams, the Packers, the Colts are a wild card, the Texans are there, the Browns are on there as well. They got to play the Jaguars in a Florida showdown and even the 49ers. Again, so the AFC East has a pretty rough schedule And because of that, I have the Dolphins floor all the way down at 6 and 11. And it's not really a reflection on the Dolphins. It's more of just the teams they're playing. A bunch of these teams have pretty damn good defenses, and that is going to slow down the Dolphins. However, the exact same as the Bills, I have their ceiling up at 10 and 7. So I think they're going to be really competitive. I would not be shocked at all if they go to the playoffs. But combining their schedule with some losses in the offseason, I am concerned. And so the Dolphins, if they finish 10 and 7, that's fantastic. That's their ceiling. If not, I'm going to blame December football again. Following that, you got the New Jersey Jets. Oh, the Jets. The excitement from last year, season tickets flying out the door being sold, and it lasted four plays before everyone realized they were going to have to watch Zach Wilson and Garrett Wilson is going Why? Why? And ultimately, the Jets just want everybody to forget about last season. Sorry. Now, here's what I will say about the Jets, though, last season. Even though everything went poorly, they were still able to win seven games. Because of that defense, Brees Hall came back, and they had Zach Wilson back there for the majority of it, and they were still able to have somewhat close to a winning record. Is that something to write home about? No. But my point is is that if Aaron Rodgers comes in and is able to play even just better than Zach Wilson, this team is going to win football games. You look at their stats, the Jets, they were 29th in points per game on offense. That has to go up. They were 23rd in rushing offense. You expect that would go up with additions to the offensive line and Brees Hall coming back healthy for a full season. And they were 30th in passing offense. Abysmal. But again, you look at the QB play that they've been dealing with and the horrible offensive line, both things which should be at least remedied somewhat. Looking at their defense, they were 12th in points allowed per game. They were 25th in rushing defense, which was surprising. And they were second in passing defense, which comes to no surprise whatsoever. And looking at their offseason, they lost Bryce Huff. They got Hassan Reddick. Maybe, possibly, he wants to get traded. They said no. Who the hell knows how that's going to work out? But I love what they did in the draft. They shirt up that offensive line with their first pick. They went and got Corley, the wide receiver, as well. They even got Braylon Allen, who I think should be really fun back there to just be an RB2 behind Brees Hall. And I know Brees Hall's ceiling is super duper high this year. And it's really just going to depend on how well that offensive line can block just for the running game. And of course, can protect Aaron Rodgers. Because I don't think their defense is going to suffer too many losses. And there is some benefit to finishing third in your division. You get a little bit of an easier schedule, though it's no walk in the park. They do have to play against teams like the 49ers, the Steelers with a good defense, as well as the Texans and the Rams. But they don't have to go against some top teams like the Bills and the Dolphins. And so that might give them a significant advantage. So here, because of that, I have them at a floor of eight and nine, and it's really just because of their defense. We don't know how Aaron Rodgers is going to play, but if I was a gambling man, I would say he's probably going to play better than Zach Wilson. And even if there's a bit of greatness there, this team is going to win football games. I know I said it last year. It didn't work out because Aaron Rodgers wasn't there. And even if he was there, I don't know if that offensive line would have been able to protect him. 
Now you would hope that the offensive line is a bit better with the additions that they have. So because of that, I have their ceiling at 12 and five. And you're probably listening to this and going, Tom, prepare to be disappointed. And yeah, that's fine. Jets fans have been disappointed basically their entire life. But yeah, I have the Jets. If everything goes well, they're ceiling at 12 and five. And Aaron Rodgers, let's see if he's still got it. And then finally, we got the New England Patriots. The Patriots. Oh boy, saying goodbye to some friends. Matthew Judon recently got traded. Bill Belichick gone in the offseason, and that's always really sad. They did bring in some free agents like Gibson, Brissett. They also re-signed some guys, especially on that offensive line, to at least protect somewhat. They also got their guy in Drake May, and there is some excitement around New England because he might be playing a little bit earlier than anticipated. It's gonna be me. They also targeted receiver, which was a desperate need. They brought in KJ Osborne, who I don't think is gonna be a world ender. They got rid of Devontae Parker, thank God. But they brought in Polk, and they also brought in Baker. They shored up that offensive line in the third and fourth round as well. And last year, things were not good for the New England Patriots. They were 32nd in points per game scored on offense. They were 26th in rushing offense. They were 28th in passing offense. However, their defense, still damn good. It was 15th in points allowed per game, 4th in rushing defense, and 11th in passing defense. And even though they did lose some pieces on defense, I still think they're going to be relatively good. The only question that really matters this season, is Drake May good? Is he the guy? I imagine that Brissett was going to get the majority of the starts in the beginning of the season. Brissett hasn't looked the greatest, but again, they might just throw a veteran back there just to also see What's this offensive line like? Is Drake May going to die back there? Which we do not want. But I imagine Drake May is going to start sooner rather than later. And he has impressed a bit in the preseason. So there's things to be excited about. Taking a look at their floor, because again, they are in a tough division and they do play against some good teams. I have their floor all the way down at four and 13. I think they could be one of the worst teams. However, and this is a big however, If that offense is able to find its groove a little bit, the protection is better, they're able to run the ball, Stevenson got extended, and Drake May starts earlier and looks better than a lot of people anticipated, this team could be competitive. I don't have their ceiling super high because, again, their schedule is not fun, and there's a lot of question marks there. So I have their ceiling around 6 and 11, which I know sounds really, really harsh. If I really had to give them another win, maybe seven wins. But I think right now the most important thing for the Patriots is just to figure out If Drake May is their franchise quarterback, and if he looks pretty darn good, they're going to win some football games or at the very least be competitive. And then finally, the bright future can begin for the Patriots because they've had it bad for so long. And so looking at these standings, I had the Bills and the Dolphins having the same ceiling. So I just had to make a decision here. I have the Jets finishing first. I'm having the Dolphins finishing second. That is totally going to bite me in the ass. Third, I have the Bills. And fourth, I have the Patriots. So, of course... Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And if it doesn't work out for the Jets this year, I'm never picking you to do well again. Let me know. You know, I sent me at TomGrossyComedy.com or at TomGrossyComedy. Also, show me a C down below. A big shout and thank you to all the patrons and YouTube members for supporting this channel. And thank you so much for watching. I'm Tom Grossy. And as always, go Pack Go!